infected SARS-25 is spreading within 50 countries. The total number of cases to date is estimated at 100,000, with over 1,300 deaths. Many of the dead are children. Our goal today is to highlight some of the specific challenges that we as a global community can face in a future pandemic. Catastrophic Contagion is a policy-focused tabletop aimed at national leaders. The scenario is meant to represent the types of challenges that we may face and not uh, be a prediction of any specific event. So our scenario, which is set in 2025, supposes that an international network called the Pandemic Corps has been established in collaboration with WHO and with participation by many countries. And with that, the exercise begins. I want to thank you all for coming on short notice. As you know, the World Health Organization is receiving urgent requests for guidance regarding the new enterovirus outbreak in Latin America. Early projections suggest that a severe pandemic is possible if the epidemic is not quickly contained. A newly developed PCR-based diagnostic is already in use at national public health laboratories in both countries under emergency authorization, but testing capacity remains severely limited. Because community transmission is currently limited to these two countries, some experts believe containment is still possible. So the question for our first discussion here in this group is should WHO recommend countries implement robust travel restrictions for Nueva Esperanza and San Rafael? And should WHO recommend closing schools in the affected areas of those countries? Recommended measures uh, should be driven by scientific evidence. So whatever needs to be done needs to be done in a way that can be done quickly but sustained. GNN will continue to follow the emerging health crisis. Sears 25 is now confirmed in 14 countries with more than 8,700 confirmed cases and 155 deaths reported worldwide. The Pandemic Corps believes that there may still be a window of opportunity before Sears 25 becomes a pandemic. Should WHO recommend to countries that they voluntarily send public health specialists and responders to those countries most in need. Action needs to be taken at country level and that needs to be enabled through a concerted global response that needs to massively scale up. There should be additional responders, but that should be combined with training of local people on scale. Plausibility of containment is very low. This is unfolding, it's evolving. So while it's Latin America focused heavily, we shouldn't forget the wider a picture, expanding the tools, making them available and having a better sense of what's really going on elsewhere. But in San Rafael in particular, where we've got a problem, it's a political leadership problem as well. There is no substitute for political leadership. There is no substitute for national leadership. A rapid assessment that determines what kind of workers the country needs, health workers the country needs, is very important. It is likely that especially San Rafael the health system is overloaded with other diseases as well. And so the importance of health workers is to help the country deal with existing problems as well. I think there's still a chance to try to contain it at source. Good afternoon, everyone. We have reconvened this committee in the setting of a substantially worsening pandemic. The Director General is seeking your input on what WHO should recommend regarding misinformation and disinformation that is now resulting in the deaths of many around the world. Many public health leaders are saying that misinformation about the potential vaccines on social media is undercutting trust in authorities and complicating their efforts to respond to the disease. Political leaders in San Rafael have not denounced the rumor. Should WHO take a position on this issue? Should WHO recommend that countries implement any of these aggressive actions or others to try to stem the spread of either mis- or disinformation, how far should governments be advised to go to try to handle this problem? The WHO should be the repository of information, but not the executor of decisions about what should happen at a local level. Government should take responsibility. The government need to say the truth to the population first. What I would recommend WHO 
as others say, is to you know counter act with facts, provided the facts based on the evidence, the the anthropology, the epidemiology of the disease we're dealing with. It is important to say we don't know. This is what we think. Today is March 20th, 2026, two months since the last meeting. The Sears 25 pandemic has been ongoing for more than six months now. This is the fourth meeting of the Emergency Advisory Board. GNN's Hassan Kamara gets us up to speed with the latest news. Nick, experts tell us many countries with scarce healthcare and public health resources are facing tremendous challenges just providing basic health care and public health functions. Today, we will focus on the antiviral Extranivir, which has demonstrated efficacy as a treatment for Sears 25. So here are two options for discussion today. The first option would prioritize countries that are in greatest need. The other option would allocate resources to countries with the necessary infrastructure already in place in order to make immediate use of the drug. Guided by the epidemiological situation in different countries rather than the capacity to purchase. Globally, I think it also needs to spend energy on convening the partners, the international partners, to ensure that option two countries are option one countries. Right? So I think it's absolutely paramount that the countries who have the greatest need also have the infrastructure to administer it. We need a, a strong international health organization. It's power, more power of coordination. It's been a year since the Sears 25 pandemic started. As of today, there have been an estimated 1 billion cases worldwide with more than 20 million deaths, including nearly 15 million children. Countless millions are alive, but left with paralysis or brain damage. Victims and their families are facing extremely uncertain futures. After SARS, MERS, Zika, Ebola, and COVID, governments were not better prepared. As enterovirus E5 sweeps the globe, some countries have done better than others in controlling its spread. The most successful countries are those which invested in preparedness and trained for this moment years in advance. This included having full-time pandemic preparedness and response teams, which conducted detailed operational planning and routinely tested those plans through exercises and drills. Leaders of these national level professional teams were networked with each other in the global pandemic core. Through this pandemic core network, public health leaders were able to collaborate in advance, share, and come to consensus around the best available scientific research and policy guidance, and therefore respond in more uniform ways in their respective countries. 